Hi, welcome again to 31 Days in Proverbs. Today is day 11. We'll look at Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11, um, for me, built off of kind of a continuation of Proverbs 10. Yesterday, we looked at that, that proverb and, and saw how the writer was showing us the rewards of righteousness versus the, the cost of wickedness that this is the outcome of, of a lifestyle that we're choosing. If we're choosing righteousness, then these are the benefits, the rewards that we will obtain. If we choose wickedness, if, we're, you know, if we defy God, if we're hostile to him and we make decisions apart from him, this is what it's going to cost us. So we, we saw that yesterday. Now, the, I think that the writer carries this through and because we're going to see a lot of this contrast again between righteousness and wickedness, though the language isn't, as specific as it as it was in chapter 10 but now it's going to be talking about the characteristics of of a, of a righteous person and a wicked person not about the rewards and the cost but but what does this look like what are the characteristics the attributes the traits of somebody who is pursuing righteousness or somebody who's rejecting god and is living a life of wickedness i went through when i when i saw that 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 was kind of what I saw was where the author was going, and I started to write a list of of uh, the traits of righteous people, those that are pursuing God's standard for living, that are trying their best to live as God intended. And and here's what I came up with, just going through, and and, and here was how he described a righteous person through this chapter: honest, humble, righteous, sensible, upright, trustworthy, gracious kind, respected, uh, had integrity, and is generous. So those were the attributes that I saw in chapter 11 uh, describing what a person who's pursuing righteousness looks like. Honesty, humility, righteousness, sensibility, upright, trustworthy, gracious, kind, respected, has integrity, and is generous. So how many of those do you and I have in our lives right now? Where are we falling short? Some of those on that list we might be very, very good at. We may, we may be strong in, and others we're a little bit weak. So we want to be able to focus on those. I mean, if we're going to take the wisdom that's being given to us um, and focus on the areas that we're weak and see where, where am I falling short? Where am I defying God in this area of my life where I'm struggling with, say, uh, um, integrity or kindness um, or people don't respect me or I'm not very humble, you know? So I would ask you to pray through that, identify a few, and then have God uh, work through you to, to correct that, to use wisdom in that area of your life. Another theme that I saw kind of weave through here, and it wasn't, you know, in order of, you know, four verses in a row, but kind of jumping around, was this idea of, of money, of possessions, of riches, of treasures. And it's in a number of the verses, seven, I think six or seven of them talk about it. And what I did was I went back through and kind of just wrote out this idea of, of riches and money and how this is contrasted. This is, you know, part of the contrast between a wicked and a righteous person, the attributes. Now, we know money was important. It is important, right? It's what drives our society. It, it's what, you know, keep, we work for it, puts food on our table. But we also know that uh, it can be very destructive. And the love of money, right, is, is the root of all evil. It's what, you know, if that's our motivation, then, then people are of little concern because money is the prize. Um, and we step over people and on people to try to obtain more money. We saw in that list of those attributes that there was, you know, honesty. And the writer talks about detest the use of, of, detest the use of dishonest scales. Who uses a dishonest scale? Someone who's trying to cheat somebody else, right? They're trying to, trying to, um, make more off of less, right? They're, they're, they're lying, they're being deceitful, um, and those types of things. But honesty, um, um, respect, integrity, and then generous. So when we look at you know money in general, we could go back and look at what Jesus taught about, and, and there's different statistics. You know, Some say that there was 11 of the 38 parables that Jesus taught that were recorded. I'll talk about money. Some counts say 16. Some, some will say one out of every 10 verses in the, in the gospel, in the four books that make up the gospels, talk about money. Other accounts would say one in seven. Either way, a lot. Um, because money is such a big part of our lives. And it can quickly uh, take possession of our heart. So look at these verses uh, about the idea of riches and, and, a, and, a, and a righteous person. 
when uh, I, I just go through these real quick. In verse four, he said, riches won't help you on the day of judgment, right? Uh, verse 15, there's danger in putting up security for a stranger's debt. Verse 16, a gracious woman gains respect, but a ruthless man gains only wealth, which that verse to me clearly says that respect is worth more than wealth, that, that money doesn't have the same value as our re respect, earned respect in somebody else's eyes. Verse 24, give freely and become more wealthy. Verse 25, the generous will prosper. And then it continues, those who refresh others will be refreshed. Now we see this uh, principle in the New Testament about give and it will be given, that we can't outgive God, that we're stewards, we're managers, we're not owners, that everything God has entrusted us with, that God has given us, really he wants to do more through us than to us. So he's entrusted us with things to continue his work so that we could bless others. Verse uh, 28 says, trust in your money and down you go. Like put your faith in money and you will fall, uh, as other translations have put that. So this idea of, of how do we interact with money when it's such a big part of our lives and culture, um, it's not going to help us on the day of judgment, right? It doesn't have eternal security. It doesn't offer any value there. It says to give freely and become more wealthy, that this is how God's economy works. The world's economy would say, don't give, keep. If you keep more, you'll have more. This is how you acquire wealth. You just keep hoarding. God's economy is the complete opposite. God says the more you give, the more you'll get. The more you get, the more you'll give, right? So there's this uh, reciprocating relationship between giving and getting. The generous will prosper. doesn't say the wealthy in verse 25, the generous. Those who refresh others will be refreshed. Think about how many people we know in our lives, and maybe we're, we're think about ourselves, that are just, we're, we're quenched, like we're dying of, of spiritual thirst. And why can we not be refreshed? Are we refreshing other people? Right? New Testament tells us that, that Jesus is the, is, the, is the living water. Like he told the lady, the woman at the well, like if you knew who you were talking to, you'd be asking me for water, right? Because you will never thirst again. And he wasn't talking about physical thirst. He's talking about spiritual thirst, that, that yearning that we have deep down inside. Um, trust in your money and down you go. Jesus' teaching on money was always pointing to what has your heart? Because what he wanted was for, the, for us and for the original audience that was hearing him teach in the New Testament, that he wanted them to not put their trust in things that are not trustworthy, that will not create any value or, or can make any promise beyond this life. You know, there's no eternal significance to our wealth. It doesn't help us for eternity. But, but Jesus was encouraging us to look at these things that rust and moths will, will destroy. And, and if you give those up, you can have something far greater, the riches of the kingdom. So I just encourage you this, this day as we study through this, just to consider where you're at with your finances. Uh, are you somebody who's generous, who gives freely, who, who uh, um, doesn't trust in money, but trusts in God more, that he will always provide? Um, that that we, we're not you know, doing dangerous things with our money, putting ourselves at risk or in danger. And that we understand that a gracious woman, right, gains respect. Um, that respect is more valuable to us than wealth. So I hope this encourages you today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, day 12, Proverbs 12. Thanks.